Welcome back. In this last part of our 5-Minute Fundamentals mini-series on capital structure, we're going to the top. The top, that is, of the capital stack called preferred equity. Not all equity is the same, and in this video we talk about the last piece of the puzzle as we talk about how professional commercial investors close the gaps on their funding needs when they acquire a real estate asset. After that, I'll round out the entire waterfall for you so you can understand how the money flows for everything including rents and when a sale or a refinance occurs who gets paid first, who gets paid last, and what happens if there's a default. Let's get started to the whiteboard right now. Welcome back. Here we are in our last of our series of three videos talking about capital structure and waterfall in commercial real estate finance. And this is important because when you're playing matchmaker or banker and you're trying to link up capital providers with borrowers or sponsors or operators, you're going to need to know this stuff. So this is important. In the last video we talked about mezzanine financing. And mezzanine financing is basically more or less not a junior mortgage, but it's treated a little differently because it has different remedies. This video we're going to be talking about the tippy top of the capital structure here and that's called preferred equity. Now if you think about equity, a lot of people are thinking, well, if I have a million dollar apartment complex I want to buy, um, I need to raise down payment money. Now that's what the novices call it, we call it equity. So if you're paying a million dollars but you only have say a hundred thousand or fifty thousand dollars but you want to pay a million dollars for this piece of property, well what happens is that we layer it with financial products and each one has a different layer of remedies for each particular financial product. For example, in the senior debt that we talked about before, the remedy was foreclosure. You foreclose on that asset and you take it back. That's what the lender would do, would do if you do not pay your mortgage payments. The mezzanine financing, they would push you out of the way and they would become the operator and they would take over the project and manage it themselves. Preferred equity is a little different here. So we're going to talk about preferred equity. Preferred equity is important because it does tie in the last gap for people, for operators and borrowers to be able to buy commercial real estate with close to little down as possible. Now don't get me wrong, these preferred equity holders, these opportunistic type of investors, hedge funds, private equity funds, they're going to want to see that you have some skin in the game too, but depending on the market, so if it's a good market, they might just look the other way and just say, hey, you just pay for the legal expenses and we'll capitalize the rest. If markets are down and capital markets are very tight, what happens is that they're going to want more equity from you. They want more skin in the game. And as the saying goes, well, if I'm an investor and I get hurt, I want you to get hurt too as well. So that's usually a function of how much money you can bring to the table. Not all equity is the same. That's something we can talk about a little later. But as it relates to preferred equity, this is money that's coming from family offices, other institutions such as uh, hedge funds and private equity funds, real estate private equity funds. In fact, if you go to prequent.com, you can see a whole list of these private equity funds out there that are looking to invest in various different places in the capital structure in commercial real estate deals. So let's we'll talk about the attributes and what makes preferred equity so cute. I like it because it closes the gap. Um, you Usually when somebody's out there and they say that they have a loan and they're looking for equity, what they're looking for is either mezzanine financing or they're looking for PREF. They're looking to close the gap in the capital structure. That's simply it. Now they don't know what that looks like. There's other types of equity too, but for the most part when somebody says this, they want preferred equity. Um, sometimes it's called participating equity, participating debt. Really what you're going to hear it called is really PREF. That's really the industry slang term for it is PREF. The collateral is very important here. Remember, when we talked about this before, when we were talking about the mezzanine financing, we were talking about how every single one of these assets is titled in the name of a special purpose entity, that LLC. And each one of these entities has what we call an operating agreement or partnership agreement. And you have to think about this as being a prenuptial agreement. Nobody really reads it, unfortunately, until the divorce happens. However, it states out for the purpose of commercial real estate, if anything does happen, who gets 
control. And the preferred equity doesn't have any collateral. What they look for is control. How do I get control of this asset? So that is what you spend all the money for on when you're doing an operating agreement. This is where a lot of the legal expenses go towards. This is the, um, the portion money for the attorneys. They usually charge between forty and $50,000 from the borrower just to be able to what we call paper this deal, to be able to close it and make sure everything's tight. So they're putting together what we hear, call here the partnership agreement. That's the most common term today. Uh, we use operating agreements. Operating agreements is when you're talking about LLCs. Partnership agreements is when you're talking about LPs, limited partnerships. The preference of repayment, well, it's very simple. First, second, third, okay? Now, with equity, unlike the debt, there is an unlimited or uncapped upside. So if you sell this apartment building that you bought for a million dollars for four million dollars, guess what? You don't have to share any of that proceeds with the senior debt, right? They're just interested in getting the coupon. They're secured. They have security. These guys over here, you're going to have to split the beans with, and that's what we call, um, it has different terms, but the preference of payment comes in the term of a pay rate. So usually you'll hear some people in the industry say, well, you know, I want a 70 after a 13. We can get in to that in some subsequent videos. However, the key point is, is that we're talking about the split. We're talking about a pay rate. Okay, so you promised me 13%, and then after I'm paid the 13%, whatever beans are left, I get 70%. That's really a short and dirty description, back of the envelope calculation of how this is done, but that's what a pay rate is. And this is usually called a preferred return. Okay, a preferred return. Remedies. What happens if the borrower doesn't do what he's doing? What do the preferred equity investors have as, as collateral? What are their remedies? How do they remedy the situation? Well, we don't talk about everything here as it relates to the asset. We talk about control. We talk about management, and that's very important here. So you have to think about it as sort of like a, like a hostile takeover. Who's taking control? We're kicking out one CEO and bringing in another CEO. And over here it goes to the GP, the general partner, or the managing member, or the borrower, the guy who wakes up up in the morning and make sure that all of these projects are going to be completed so that they can actually sell it off or rent it or refinance it. Uh, it does not go to the property. Remember, it's all about control. A lot of times we talk about economic control. Sometimes uh, what will happen is, is that the general partner or the managing member, the person who's in control, what we call the operator, the borrower, uh, they will be diluted. Their economic interests will be diluted if something doesn't happen or if things are being mismanaged. They could lose entire management, they could lose entire control, but that determines, and after a lot of legal fees, how this divorce happens is stipulated in the operating agreement or the partnership agreement. Um, sometimes they're diluted, they might have been you know, getting a bunch of money, but then there's these bad boy clauses that come in, and then, well, they're not getting as much as they used to because there's new management coming in and they have to incentivize a new general partner. So this is what we call today the waterfall. And this is something that's very misunderstood, but if you understand these key components, you're able to really work in this high dollar business with a lot of sophisticated institutional players who are professionals. And that's why I love this business very much. This is what we call the waterfall here. So if you think about it, this is maybe a reverse waterfall, maybe a flood. So when the money comes in, if there's any sort of what we call a key event, for example, and let's just say a key event, there's only two exits in commercial real estate, right? So it's either a sale or a refinance, what happens is there's a flood of cash coming in, correct? So who gets paid off first? This guy's paid off first in whole. Then this guy's paid off. The mez is paid off in whole. And then the, me the pref is paid off after that, and that's by a defined structure, you know, whether it's 50-50, even, Steven, or something different. That's what we talk about as it relates to the key event, the waterfall. When the money comes in, who gets paid and what matter of preference. I hope you enjoyed this series here. I'm very passionate about the commercial real estate financing business, and I look forward to working with you soon in the future. In the meantime, please keep watching these five-minute fundamental videos and give us any feedback. I love creating these things and hopefully you get a lot of value out of them too. Thank you very much.